Hello everyone, have you checked out my video on Valentine's Day yesterday? Did you have a good Valentine's Day? What did you do? I had a pretty productive day actually, but my highlight was in the evening. I attended a sharing session, thanks for Dr. Paul's invitation to his master course on computer assisted language learning to talk about my channel. Okay, so uh, Sarah, all right, so thanks very much for joining uh, this uh, session. So um, just now I was, I was thinking how long we had known uh, each other, maybe 10 years, maybe maybe more, right? Okay, good. So uh, so how are you these days? Uh, very good, keeping myself very well. Uh, apart, only a few days ago, I had a corneal abrasion. So that, that was a bit upsetting for my eyes. So I have to wear a protective <laughs> lens now. And that's why you see some of my videos uh, nowadays, I'm trying to use this emoji just to cover my eyes uh, for a little bit for it to rest. But otherwise, everything is good. Thank you. Yes, I, I noticed that. I noticed your emojis. And in fact, I was <laughs> I was wondering, well, um, was that, was that a gimmick or, <laughs> right, or something? All right. Okay, Sarah, you Sarah. have done uh, something quite uh, special, which is to um, uh, create, produce your own YouTube channel, all right, mm -hmm. uh, mainly for providing students with extensive uh, listening. So I have three main questions to, um, to ask you. Uh, mm -hmm. The first main question is, how did, you, how did you start the idea of creating a YouTube uh, channel. And then the second question is, um, how, did, how, did you, how did you decide on the, the topics, the content uh, mm. uh, to talk about, all right? And then thirdly, um, how did you um, organize your students to listen to, um, mm. to your um, YouTube channel, all right? Okay, go ahead. Thanks for Dr. Paul's guiding questions. I got to walk down a memory lane since last year when I first started to talk about how and what got me start making my first video. Check this out. Okay, so uh, first questions, how did I start with the idea of creating a YouTube channel? Actually, it's a very practical reason uh, because uh, all of you remember a few months back, we have this whole school suspension thing. So my school started from a 50 minute per lesson cut down to only 35. Mm -hmm. And I'm teaching a senior form uh, class every year. So a 35 minutes lesson is really not a lot to use, especially my class is, uh, it's floating this year. So for me to actually get them uh, settled down, uh, paying attention to me and really start learning, we're talking about less than 20 minutes. So um, the first time that I really started thinking of making videos, which, at the very beginning, I, to be very honest, I was I was hes hesitant because I'm not very um, confident in in front of the camera. I, I get I get stage fright and stuff like that. So, but it was because of one inter um, inter class old practice lesson that I've decided yes, I have to make um, a video as my material for my students. The reason why was in that particular lesson, my students were actually first time actually really. Um, starting to discuss about that particular topic. And I thought I really want to give them um, constructive feedback afterwards, but because of a time constraint, so I can't do that. And I told them, you know what, I'm going to give my comments to today's discussion um, later mm -hmm. on through a video. So that way it sort of forced myself. Now I, <laughs> I've said it in front of my students now, so I must make it. So that was the first time that I actually sit down and type out all my thoughts and stuff and then start creating my first uh, video. So if you guys go to my mm -hmm. channel, okay. the first video is actually a very, very basic one. I remember I recorded using my phone and that's why it was really, you know, a narrow view. So that was the first one. And uh, one thing leads to another. Uh, turns out that because of my video, my students mm -hmm. really started talking, discussing Ooh, in English, good, which good. Uh, in the past, it was really reluctant to do it. Mostly in English lesson, it's really just English teacher talking and the students were just really passive listening. But because of that video, and, um, and so I, I saw this dynamic change and I was really pleased with it. And mm. so that gives me more confidence and more, you know, more practical reasons to continue making more video. And now it just blossomed into something like this, which I was not planned for. It was totally spontaneous and so I have to actually thanks for the COVID situation and my students uh, to 
for something like that to 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 happen. Yeah. So that was the main reason why mm-hmm. I started this mm-hmm. YouTube channel. It's really just a, a okay. place easy, accessible for for all of them. They they, they can use it on their laptop or their phone on their way to school. Yeah. So that yeah. was very very accessible, and everyone knows YouTube anyway. And um, yeah, so that was the reason. So yeah, now that I think about it, it's thanks to COVID and the shortened lets in time that somehow forced me down this path of content creation. Though I'm most glad that I pushed myself out of my comfort zone and told my student that I will give my feedback in a video so that they can watch it at home. A promise is a promise. Now I have nowhere to go but make it happen. So I did. Moving on, how did I come up with the topic ideas? Here's another expression for my students out there. I let nature take this course. So what about the uh, the topics? How did you come up with the, those topics, the, the content? Right. The content so. Ideas? Mm, yeah, uh, for the topic, as I said, the first topic really just for speaking practice. So all my mm-hmm. video at the very beginning was all, all, all about speaking uh, strategies and comments related, and I started to use those as uh, some of my flip learning uh, lesson material and um, tell them to watch in advance and then finish the worksheet because I have the script myself, right? I have the point form. I know what I'm going to say in my comments. So. Uh, that way, it's very easy for me to turn that into some, some sort of worksheet to be given to the students before my lesson. And then we'll be using the lesson time to really start discussing about those contents that, that, that we cover in, in the video. But moving on from that, it, it was actually one of my Form 6 students um, <laughs> advice. Hey, what do you want to talk about? And um, being teenager and all, they were all about Mira. And to be honest, at that time, I had no idea who Mira is. It was really like like you um, share on Facebook the other day. Uh, who are these people? I keep on seeing them anywhere you go around Hong Kong. So that was because of my student's suggestion. He said that, oh, if we make something to do with Mira, mm-hmm. I'm sure a lot more other classmates are going to see. And then we can have some other more meaningful discussion in class. And I thought, oh, that's a good idea. So we started collaborating. We had a Google Doc and we we basically just throw ideas back and forth. And eventually we came up with um, the final script. And uh, I've, I've decided, well, if students are really watching it, then I don't need to just, well, I, I don't need to limit myself to just reach my own school students. I could mm-hmm. potentially reach the whole Hong Kong. Uh, mm-hmm. Students thought, well, why don't we reach all the whole Hong Kong DSC candidates? And that idea really excites mm-hmm. my students mm-hmm. internally. You know, he, I, I can see that he really have that ownership because he knew that the idea was coming from him and he was happy that there was a teacher working together with him. And so um, we throw ideas back and forth on Google Doc first. And after a week, we sort of finalized. And so through that process, he also did a lot of um, writing and then I do a lot of editing and stuff back and forth. So eventually we made this Gruntal video, which if you guys go, go to my channel, it's still the leading um, video so far. Well, to my surprise, uh, mm-hmm. probably be, probably because it's it's mirror topic. So yeah. uh, from then, um, while we were discussing about this topic, um, obviously we're all you know chit chatting and discussing in English with my students. And uh, there were a couple of other um, expressions. It's just very natural that we'll just use. For example, mm-hmm. um, while we were discussing the, the the content, what to include, and I happens to remember I mentioned something like two birds in one stone. For example, like you are practicing, you are speaking English with me at the same time you're doing your writing practice because you need to type up the the writing script. So it's it's basically two two birds in one stone. And I also took that opportunity to explain that particular phrase, and so that idea um, started sprouting at that particular moment I thought well how about apart from giving speaking uh, comments as my mm-hmm. video how about I, I start my own series of, of teaching them uh, various useful expressions so that was my first idea and then thinking back I remember in form five um, we started the first wave of the COVID situation and uh, uh, I was having the whole presentation done in, in Neopod and we were talking about uh, some figurative language used in in reading text and my students find it really useful because some of them mm-hmm. uh, basically majority of my students are will be taking uh, reading paper b2 and we know that in b2 sometimes the text uh, the figurative language and idioms and expressions and stuff like that so they're really interested to know more about that so from that and together mm-hmm. with my students support 
So I had this idea. So how about every episode, if we were to meet each other, you know, just very briefly, probably thirty to 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 one hour, to film something that we will be using these、um, useful expressions. So that that might be that might be something interesting, rather than just sit down and have group discussions or speaking, which you know,、um, not 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 really conducive to have an mm, output. Mm, and mm. to me, as a teacher, I think it's really important. Yeah. Uh, to not only give authentic input, but also、uh, supervise and somehow fo- halfly、um, force and also encourage the students to、mm-hmm. produce their own output because I really do see、uh, the power of the students' ownership in terms、yes. of their learning. Because once they own it, once they felt that this idea is there, and no matter you know how they how they do,、um, it's the teacher's job to facilitate to guide、mm-hmm. them along the way. But in、yeah. the In the end, once they see the products, and、um, time and time again, I also ask my students, "How do you feel now that you look <laughs> back at the video that we've done together?" And they're they're like super super happy. And I've seen a couple of my students transformation through that.、Mm-hmm. And、um, and so I I was happy that we、yes. had this idea together. And、um, so so that was yeah how we come up with the with the with the idea. And mainly it's just me being a teacher. You know, every day we 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 will. Talk to students, and then there there might be some expressions that that one might pop out, and、mm-hmm. I'll just list it out if the students find it useful, or some of my even、uh, lower grade form. It, it could be some some sort of exposure material as well.、Yeah. So I thought, yeah, yeah you know, might as well. And、um, time flies. I've so far I've accumulated eighteen episodes, and、mm-hmm. it will still be going on、yeah. <laughs> if social distancing measures loosen up a bit. Yes, one one thing you have said resonates me. Uh, a lot, which is that have to do stu- have the students involved, all right. So this is what this is one thing I've been emphasizing again and again in the course so far. Because if we're talking about、um, technology competence, our students are smarter than us. So get them involved, and they'll be pleased and excited, <laughs> all right, to be、um, involved, and then they learn. Uh, in the process, right? Most、okay. definitely, so, yes. Yes.、Uh, so my next question、um, is is like this, right?、Um, did you did you just tell、uh, the your students about the the existence of the YouTube channel so that、um, if they liked, then they would go to your YouTube channel and then pick some、uh, episodes to watch for、uh, extensive listening and viewing, or did you actually? Have、uh, some ways of organizing your students to、uh, to to make use of those episodes. <laughs> okay,、uh, for that sort of systematic、uh, dissemination of these information, it only happened at the very beginning when I made those、okay. video、mm-hmm. for the speaking comment because at that time not many students know that I I started putting my videos online, and so、um, only the students who I teach this year know about those. And because it's so academic related, it's is nothing、um, exciting or worth talking about among the students community. So not a lot of students know. Yeah. So at that time, I could、um, use my my material as、uh, flip classroom materials, or、uh, use it afterward as consolidation or as homework.、Uh, but once I had the Gernto video out, and、um, because I was working it with my with, with my students, so、mm-hmm. they already、mm-hmm. start telling other people. So without much、um, promotion or ev- advertising, even、um, everyone already know. The existence、mm-hmm. of this channel. So、uh, from from then, channel,、right? exactly. So from then, it's really difficult for me to、um, give them as the flip material.、Um, so now I will have to really plan in terms of、uh, what I want to do in class.、Uh, if I really want to want them to watch it before my lesson, then I have to withhold the upload until the night before,、mm-hmm. or only. Um, unlisted only for my students to to watch it before I upload to to YouTube,、um, but that hasn't been a main main problem. My ultimate goal is really to expose、uh, my 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 students because I've I found myself told my students、uh, this year quite often is that、um, I've come across a lot of students who are really really、um, nervous and. and Stressed about the DSC English curriculum, and some of the really strong one even、uh, mm. fell lost、mm. towards the end of their battle. And I, I 
I, I, I felt truly sorry for them. And I found myself telling them that the how to prepare for the English subject. It's not really um, like any other subjects like maths or science. Those are linear subjects. For mm -hmm. English, it's really a non-linear. There, there is no a fixed curriculum that we can yeah, study yeah. apart from the skills, apart from the exposure. So I, I started telling them, I said, if you want to improve your English, it's really the exposure. The more yeah. you read, the more you write, the more you listen, the more you speak, exactly. the better it will be for your four skills. Exactly. Yeah. That is the only way. Um, yes. Of course, doing past paper practice and, and all that, you know, memorizing words, those will work, but mm -hmm. only for a short mm -hmm. term. Short term. And uh, personally, I think that those um, so-called methods or strategies are really just a coping mechanism rather than really truly um, embrace the language and, and improve from its mm -hmm. core. So for my personal belief, um, I think exposure and yeah, yeah. Um, uh, motivate students to really yes, exactly. like uh, it's, it's more important. So I, I try to make it as, as interesting as possible. And some yes. of the content I include in the script, it's really to do with their day-to-day -day life, uh, things mm -hmm. that happen in school. Mm -hmm. For example, some of my episodes talked about the, the school musical and my school did carry out the uh, musical. So topic that they know and very mm -hmm. familiar. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so, so that, that's yeah. how we go yeah. from there. Yes. So uh, if they are motivated enough and also if the uh, channel itself is interesting enough, then they will go to the channel on their own. So you don't actually need to organize or yeah. have a structured program to uh, entice them to uh, go to the uh, channel. All right. Good. Now, uh, I'm afraid I am coming to my last question. All right. Mm. Um, now, um, my last question is about the, the, the production, because I, for, for my own YouTube um, videos, I, I, I just have one way to go about the uh, production, which is to start with the PowerPoint, <laughs> right? which is to start with a PowerPoint. So I would, I would have a PowerPoint, PowerPoint created, and then I would narrate my PowerPoint slide after slide, and then I would export it as a video, Upload yeah. it and to YouTube, and that's all. But mm. you have a variety of techniques, approaches. Like sometimes uh, you would appear like a YouTuber, all right, speaking directly to the audience. Sometimes you would have a script, all right, acting out something with a student and yeah. and so on and so on, all right. So my last question would be: Do you have any um, experience in terms of the production side that you can share with us? Oh my goodness! Uh, I don't really have uh, a production idea to go to to go to. It's it's really just play by ear um, because my first video I, again is to do with speaking, and to me it's it's very natural and 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 easy for me to record those videos because I just basically sit in front of the camera and talk about all my comments that I remember uh, my students are uh, doing in class. So th those are not much planning needed. But moving on to my English with Miss Sarah series, because I have to work with my students and uh, for them to do a live video recording, it's quite daunting to mm. most of them. And yeah. even for my top students, I, I, told, I told him, I said, are, are you okay in front of the camera? We just acted <laughs> out, you know, a <laughs> dramatic dialogue and stuff. And the first thing he said was, no, oh my God, I'm so camera shy. I don't want to do it like that. So uh, instead of, just leaving him, you know, be. And I, I, I suggest, how about we take still photo and uh, then we can piece them together. It's, it's almost like drawing on a piece of paper and then you flip through really quick and then you form like a motion picture. So that, that, was, that was how I came up with this. Uh, we both compromised. So we can still have the audio recording part and they're okay to allow me to take still photos of them mm -hmm. and where they will have to, basically it's another, um, Dra drama technique as well that I introduced yes. in, 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 in my yes. school, which is the still image. Once you see the word, you use your own understanding of the word, of the phrase to make your own still image or that particular scene. So I thought in that case, uh, the students are also learning because if they don't understand what it means or what is being portrayed, then, then they won't be able to give you that facial expressions or any mm -hmm. um, gesture and movement. So I thought, okay, then we'll just do a series of still pictures and then we'll just piece them together. And uh, now um, as the channel develop, I'm trying to include even some 
some small uh, uh, snippets of um, actual video uh, in, <laughs> into it. So I, I have gradually, <laughs> slowly yes, but yes, gradually, yes. also forcing myself to because again, I, I'm not an actress, so it, it's really difficult. But uh, I find it, it's 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 really fun to grow with mm -hmm. my students and do it together. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Very good. Okay. Yeah. Um, actually, I was going to say that. Um, well. Um, you 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 have that kind of charisma. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I read. Really, I I need. I do need to use uh, this word. All right. Thank you. It actually <laughs> helps you. Uh, well, mesmerize your audience, which I don't have. All right. Okay. Good. Now, uh, sorry. I I think uh, I need to bring that um, sharing to an end because uh, our session is <laughs> still. Uh, has to go on uh, for still a bit of time, all right? So once again, thanks for giving up. Uh, Thank you, everyone. Anything to come to. Um, do, you, do you mind putting your email address in the chat room so that in case some of our teachers in the course want to contact you or want to, yeah, and then they can, all right? Okay, all right. Yep. So feel free to leave the room or whatever, all right? So... Go, so go on sure. the <laughs> Thank right? you. Okay. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. If you're still here watching this, thank you for staying with me till this very second. You've just witnessed my first sharing session in a master's course of an established institute, CUHK, to 50 teachers in Hong Kong. I still can't believe it. Okay, I have done professional sharing about teaching and education in public before, but about content creation that I've only had like three months of practice, this is the first time. Once again, a big shout out to Dr. Paul. Thank you for giving me your precious lesson time and meet your great cohort this year. Looking forward to more collaborations in the future. Bye for now.